Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Andy. So today's video is going to be another installment in my Adulting 101 series and that is going to be about budgeting and saving tips that I wish I had known sooner. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoy this video and check out some of my other stuff and hit that subscribe button if you like what you see. So let's get into this video. My first tip I wish I had known sooner is to have a goal. So whether it's a monthly goal, a, an annual goal, a goal like by 30 I want to have a certain amount of money in my savings account, anything like that. We're talking specifically about saving. I wish I had known this sooner. I only started like saving money and actually thinking of what I'm like the number I want to save towards and stuff like that probably like two years ago honestly like <laughs> I, I just it, it really has never been something that's on the top of my mind nor is it something that I've ever been educated about or that I've ever tried to educate myself about so if this can help you guys to start sooner than I did then I've done my job tip number two is to get rid of the spend everything mentality I feel like it's a weird thing that I've noticed with my peers that especially growing up it was a really bad habit of mine to if I knew I had 5,000 Rand for the month then by the end of the month I would max it out or if it's like the 28th of the month and I've still got 2,000 Rand in my account then I would just go blow it I would suddenly need a new pair of jeans that I didn't need before I would suddenly need a new pair of shoes that I didn't need before you know so getting out of that mentality is something that only happens with practice and actually learning how to prioritize what you want to do with your money and again having a goal so if it doesn't work towards your goal then don't do it number three is how I've figured out how to combat number two and that is to have a month end zero out let's say again if it's the 28th i don't have any bills to pay i've still got petrol in my car and stuff like that and let's say i still have a thousand rand in my account then i'll just take all of that money and transfer it into my savings account and have nothing left in my actual bank account because I know payday is coming anyway. So it's it's something I don't really know if it's a good thing to do in terms of like what the bank sees on their side if they think it's good for me to like hit zero at the end of every month but for me it makes sense because then I can start every new month on a set budget on a new budget based off of my income and so that I don't waste the extra money because if I know I already had an extra 2,000 rand sitting in my account at the end of the month anyway, then I'll probably start wasting whatever money I do get on payday. So this way it kind of keeps me grounded and I took all the extra money, put it in my savings account and I know that it's actually doing good and it's not being wasted in any way. Number four is something that I think a lot of us fall for and I actually even fell for it a little bit when I started flying and that is to avoid lifestyle inflation. Just because you're getting paid 3,000 Rand more than what you were last year doesn't mean you need to suddenly start spending 3,000 Rand more than what you did last year. Doesn't mean you need to move into an apartment that's a thousand Rand or 2,000 Rand more expensive. It's not always going to work out. I think it's a really good thing to maybe look into more long-term investments with that money even if it's something like okay I'm getting 3,000 Rand more now so now I can get medical aid if you don't already have medical aid or now I can get life insurance if you don't already have life insurance. Instead of thinking, oh, 3,000 Rand more, I can get a better car, I can get a bigger flat. No, you don't need any of that. If you can survive in your little studio flat right now, and, and unless it's absolutely uncomfortable, unless you maybe made it a goal, if maybe you made it a goal, like, okay, um, okay, by the end of this year, I'm going to get the promotion I want, I'm going to work really, really hard for it, so that I can finally move into my own place then by all means, because that was your goal, that is what you are working towards, that is your own self-accomplishment being met. So if it's something like that, then sure. But if you just if you just now want to just randomly kind of spend your money on random things you don't actually need, like your current car, even though it's old, if it still works, there is really no need to get a better car. Number five is to budget for your lifestyle spending. You know, you're going out to dinner dates with your friends, your birthday gifts that you want to get your other friends, your 
trips that you want to take try to budget for that ahead of time if you know you generally go out once a week each month and you know you're gonna spend roughly 200 rand each of those times then budget for that in the beginning of the month try not to go over that if you ended up going out twice and you've spent all the money you had budgeted for that then stay in it, literally you, you're not gonna die from staying in you're not it's not gonna affect you in a negative way to stay in and save some money I think our priorities need to change in this day and age and we need to stop thinking that image is everything and that you have to be at the hottest party with the biggest people with the most famous people and the coolest people and um, your friends are gonna think that you're so uncool if you want to stay in one weekend like it's really not that big of a deal guys it's not Number six is to focus on gaining experiences and not things. You don't need 25 pairs of shoes. You don't. No one does. You don't need 30 pairs of jeans. You don't need the fanciest new cell phone or anything like that. But you do need to spend time with your family. You do need to spend time with your loved ones. And if you can put your time and energy and money into that, that is going to be so much more fulfilling. And that's something I've learned. I'd rather put my money into saving up to go and see my parents whenever I can, as opposed to buying another pair of sunglasses that I forget to wear every single day. So, yeah, remember that experiences are probably going to be worth more than things like let's say you've always wanted to learn how to cook maybe invest in that take some cooking lessons maybe you've always wanted to learn how to defend yourself so invest in some self-defense lessons stuff anything like that guys like get some driving lessons if you don't even drive yet you know i feel like that makes more sense to spend your money on stuff like that than to just buy another pair of shoes number seven is to save for the big holidays now this isn't the same as my first saving goal that i mentioned as the first point this is completely different this is if you know that in december you're going to be on holiday you get to take a vacation and you want to go somewhere fancy put that into a completely separate savings goal we actually have this piggy bank that we put like all of our extra change and stuff into and that's going to be our spending money for our december holiday or our spending money for our birthday weekend or whatever the case is we don't we honestly don't even know what we want to use it for yet because i'm probably going to be working over christmas so it would make more sense for us to use it over our birthday weekend but for things like that i would rather already have the money there than have to think like a week before my birthday oh crap now i need to take out five thousand rand that i can spend over my birthday weekend no i'd rather do it in advance knowing that okay when my birthday comes up i'm gonna have enough money you can even set it in advance if you know you want to have five thousand rand for your birthday then start saving now put 500 rand away each month so that you know by the time your birthday comes up you've got a hell of a lot of spending money and you can party all night if you want to number eight is to educate yourself i knew nothing about financial education and just personal financial literacy up until maybe last year seriously i was so ignorant you guys and i realized it is really 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 important i've only just recently taken out life insurance like how insane is that and i'm 26 years old I have friends who started when they were like 20 so they were already way ahead of the game instead of like unlike me so I feel like it's really important especially while we're young to just educate ourselves and don't think oh it's fine it'll sort itself out because majority of the time when it comes to finances it won't sort itself out you have to be the one that's in charge of your finances and you have to know what's going on and you have to be able to protect yourself and be ready for when a bad day comes don't let it be this huge scary thing money is not the enemy it is not evil or anything like that it's just something that you yourself have to know how to control you have to know how to prioritize it it is not the most important thing in the world but it is a pretty important part of living and just surviving on a daily basis in this day and age so i would suggest you watch there are so many financial literacy channels on youtube there's so many financial literacy books that you can go and read out there 
so i highly suggest you check some of those out guys they are very very helpful and a lot of them are really good at explaining it to just us mere mortals because i always thought that finance had like all these big words and percentages mm -hmm. and whatever okay i understand what a percentage is you know i'm not that dumb but you know like just all these big words that I always thought were going to be a part of everything that I just wouldn't understand it and I always felt like it was just too overwhelming and I was just too stupid to actually know what any of it means but it's actually not that difficult to understand your own personal finances. My next tip is to buy second hand wherever you can. If you've just graduated and you're moving into your first apartment, you really don't need to go to at home or curry craft to buy a couch and all these things because the couches they are really really expensive. Even though it's second hand, a lot of people do take really good care of their appliances and stuff and I do suggest looking at Facebook Marketplace. Your car doesn't have to be brand new when you've just graduated. Get a second hand car. Just make sure obviously you do a research, don't just go for any like random because like a car is also an investment and it does have to get you from point A to point B and you don't want to waste your money in that. But there are certain things obviously that you should buy brand new that you shouldn't be like buying off of someone else but you know obviously just think about what makes sense to you and try to prioritize what you can you know spend more on and what you should probably try to save on and then my last tip is to live at home for as long as possible i don't currently have that option i live and work in johannesburg and my parents live in underberg but when i was at home in underberg and living and working in underberg i lived at home why pay bills when i can live at home with my parents and save up that's how i was able to save up to move to johannesburg was because i was able to live at home obviously i contributed to things like the groceries um i would make sure to fill petrol in the family car that i used at the time and not and i tried really hard not to ask my parents for any money because obviously i was earning a salary so I, that was my way of like learning to be responsible especially if you're living at home and you're trying to learn how to budget and stuff it's a good way to go because then you kind of like have room to play around with and if you start every month while living at home putting away a certain amount of money every month let's say that you think if you think you're gonna afford a flat that's four thousand rand a month then while you're living at home you can put four thousand rand a month into savings every month and then adjust your lifestyle to whatever money is left over on the side so that you know that when you do move out and you do have to pay for rent and electricity and water and your other bills and stuff you can actually afford it and you already are used to living that lifestyle and you're used to living within that budget then by the time you actually move out it will come as no surprise to you Okay guys, that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you have any other budgeting tips and tricks that you wish you had known sooner, please put them down in the comments below. I would love to take your input and I would love to hear from you guys. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Please don't forget to spread good vibes and be kind. Bye-bye.